tonight's playlist is really a sweet little story. It is called Revenge. He is the master of suspense and has been hailed as the greatest director of all time. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be taking a look at the life and career of Alfred Hitchcock. Born on August 13, 1899 in Leytonstone, London, England, Hitchcock grew up a lonely boy who was ashamed of his obesity. As a child, he was also the subject of several traumatizing punishments at the hands of his parents. For example, at the age of five, his father had the police lock him up for bad behavior, and his mother regularly made him stand at the foot of her bed for hours when he acted up. Due to his upbringing, Hitchcock became infatuated with harsh treatment as a theme. Following his father's untimely death when he was only 14 years old, Hitchcock left home to become a draftsman and advertising designer. He also began writing short articles for the Henley Telegraph. 1919 was the year that Hitchcock finally used his skill as a writer and artist to join the film industry. Starting off, he began by illustrating title cards for silent films. But he quickly learned scripting, editing, and art direction at Paramount's famous Players Lasky Studio in London. By 1925, he completed his first film. It was an Anglo-German production called The Pleasure Garden. This collaboration with a German studio helped shape his style early on through his introduction to Expressionism. But it was 1927's The Lodger that was heralded as his breakthrough. This was the first Hitchcock film to feature an innocent protagonist who was accused of a crime. Just two years later, the director took on his first sound film. 1929's Blackmail saw Hitchcock use a technique he would use throughout his career. In the film, subjective sound heard only by the central character was used to demonstrate her fragile mental state. <laughs> I suppose we should soon have lady detectives up at the yard, eh? <laughs> Shortly afterward, he linked sex and violence in 1930's Murder. Steadily evolving as a visionary, he continued to hone his craft and garner mass attention with projects such as The Man Who Knew Too Much, The Lady Vanishes, and Jamaica Inn. However, he then left Europe due to the threat of World War II. Once in America, he began work on Rebecca, which went on to win an Oscar. The 1941 film Suspicion, in which a woman comes to believe that her husband is a murderer, and on 1942's highly acclaimed thriller Saboteur. It was the 1950s that ultimately became the director's most productive and memorable decade. During this time, he created dozens of legendary projects, including Rear Window, Vertigo, North by Northwest, and the controversial and incredibly violent thriller, Psycho. By 1955, he became an American citizen and launched his own television show called Alfred Hitchcock Presents. That show catapulted him from A-list director to cultural icon. He continued to write, produce, and direct up until 1979. During this period, he turned out some of his better-known films, including The Birds, Marnie, and Family Plot. With these films, he continued his long-standing practice of making cameo appearances within his productions. Despite his lifelong fascination with mayhem, murder, and shock, the director led a quiet and humble existence. He preferred the comfort of home to the lavish life of Hollywood. At the end of his life, Hitchcock was honored with the American Film Institute's Lifetime Achievement Award. He was also knighted just a few months before he peacefully passed away in his sleep on April 29, 1980. With a career that lasted over 50 years, he is the most widely known and influential director in the history of cinema. The large body of work and advancements that Hitchcock left behind continue to be enjoyed and studied by fans and filmmakers alike, even decades after his passing. That was disappointing, wasn't it? 